Hello, good evening, and welcome to a very special episode of the Super License F1 podcast. My name is Rodney. And my name is Zachary. And Zach, I'm sure, like me, you haven't been missing F1, not one little bit, not because there's no races, but because of all the fantastic replays of old races and the fantastic online racing that's just been filling the gap so perfectly. It's almost like we don't need F1 to come back. I just, these these half hour half hourly races, really, I just can't keep track of everybody. We've got, <laughs> you know, cricketers driving around on F1 tracks. We've got X drivers. We've got minor celebrities, YouTube streamers, <laughs> Twitch streamers, all kinds minor of streamers, 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 really streakers, everything. Yeah. It's, um, no one's invited me or you, though, yet. So, huh. Can't be far away. I haven't Lost checked in the post, my spam folder, yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, besides the fact that there's like, there's a flurry of entertainment and I'm sure that everyone listening is just bombarded with choices. Uh, we've been just sort of trying to keep it chill and not uh, make content just for the sake of it. Um, if you want to engage in all of those places that are like, here's this week's rumors. And then next week say, ah, the rumors that we told you, they're not true. If you want to engage in that, go ahead. That's just not really our style. It never really has been. But uh, we thought, what what can we do that uh, keeps us... Sane, basically, gives you guys something to listen to, check in on how we're doing. But what's also something that might be a bit interesting, timely, worthwhile? Everyone's in the same boat right now. We've all got uh, a bit of time in our hands to get a bit of screen time up and about. And we're sure that all of you have watched Drive to Survive, season two that came out a few months ago. But what we thought we might try, and I have to confess this is a bit of a bucket list thing for me, what I thought we might try is a commentary track. We've never done that before. This is a super license first. I'm really excited, but Zach and I are going to watch the episode, do a commentary track over the top, and you can watch along or just listen, whatever floats your boat, whatever tickles your pickle, whatever some things you're something else. Whatever spackers your crackers. <laughs> That's something. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever your kibbles your bits. Um, <laughs> So we'll let you know when we're going to hit play, which will be very soon. Uh, this is to give you a pausing for a little bit of time, uh, grab your chips and get in the couch and get ready to uh, sync up with episode. This is important. Season two, episode one is the one we're going to watch. Uh, what's the name of the episode? Zach, I had it up a second ago. It's called Lights Out. That's the one you want. Another mm. Formula One season kicks off at the Australian Grand Prix. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? As Lights Out is a Halloween teams. special. It's really <laughs> spooky. Lights yeah. out. Do it in the dark. We've got yeah. Rod and I've got torches under our chins. I'm Very really true. excited to to see how Formula One does spooky. Yeah, and the good thing is, if you get bored, you can just flick over and watch Tiger King. I hear that's really good as well. So uh, it's still a choice, really. But yeah, we're gonna hit play in a minute. We'll tell you. We'll do a countdown or something so that you can sync it up with us if you want. Again, if you're just, if you're, I was gonna say, if you're on the train or driving your car, you're not doing that. You're sitting at home. If you're doing the dishes, if you're on the indoor treadmill and you just want to listen, that's cool. We'll try and consider that. But we might be referring to stuff that you uh, are likely going to be watching. Yeah, you could have your own Netflix party and play this over a bunch of you and all your friends who are self isolating. Yeah watching the same episode as well. It'll be just like having mates over on the couch, your old mates, uh, Hot Rod and Zippy Zack, coming around to watch Drive to Survive. Well, are you ready, Zack? Is everything set? Is everything prepared? I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm ready. Um, am I going to press play? I reckon you give us a countdown and you hit play. Okay. In five, four, Ooh. three, two, one. Yes, dun dun. I did. Dun dun. Um, I did notice that the Netflix description for this show in general says this show is colon, and then there's two items. One is forceful, and the next one is exciting. So <laughs> I guess they're meant to be two separate things. It's either forcefully exciting, it's excitingly forceful. You can uh, make up your own mind, I suppose. It's so nice to see. Um, I love that this season starts off. It's like, hey, we got Ferrari people. Don't yeah. worry, everyone. <laughs> they're here. Ferraris Relax. here. Yeah, oh, it is a bit of a. I don't know what you think about the whole season as a, as a whole, but uh, they do they do sort of use the Charles Leclerc clip a lot, and that doesn't come until very late in the season. I remember. Yeah, I feel like the the like format slightly changed. Right, this felt a it little more a little like bit. let's look at sets of stories. Yeah, as as opposed to um, like working through the season somewhat chronologically. Yeah. But we are getting a bit of a recap of all the teams and what's happening. These these cars crashed. These drivers were crap and then they won. Good to start. I did a lot of swearing. It's very much just like reintroducing you to the characters that you know and love. 
Yeah, I wish this had been here um, before I did my season review podcast. If I could have watched this um, well, at the yeah. end of last season, <laughs> where's the nice recap that I can get at the end of every season? Would I need have been that. very handy, yeah. And then we could have just done a commentary on this one-minute intro and then saved ourselves a whole bunch of time. Yeah, just pulled apart the one-minute intro for, for 45 yeah. minutes. And been this like, is that was the we... season, guys. <laughs> Some people have commented on this as well, that like watching the season and knowing the stories and then coming into something like this, you sort of, it is a little bit painful when you know what's coming. And that happens a few times for me when I watch this the first time through. It's a little bit like that now, watching Daniel walk away from Red Bull and seeing how good Renault was doing. And it's like, ouch, oh no, yeah. can we wind back time and just not do this? Yeah, exactly. It's... Yeah, the world that the, the could have been, the what ifs, but you know, yeah. it's also just a really lovely way to like to explore the season in that sense. Yeah, like, that's kind of but true. it does make me partly a little bit sad that there's this whole other side to Formula One that, unless you're really, really, really close to it, and that I'm talking like in the paddock, F1 journalists with full access, you wouldn't know any of this stuff. You know, I suppose yeah, that's why the that's series true. is so successful. But it's, I think it, it sells a little bit of this sport that if you just get into the sport right now, maybe you're expecting it to be like this, but it's yeah. not quite like that. This is a long intro, I'm realizing as well. Like it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> we haven't even started and <laughs> we're probably a couple of minutes in now. <laughs> yeah, we're, um, yeah, we're at least, I feel like three minutes in and it's like, oh, hey, this boy. is Formula One, by the way. There are 20 drivers <laughs> and 10 teams and some races. <laughs> Not a bad thing. I think there's some points in this season where they, they could have used a little bit more explanation and like fleshing out what the story you're meant to be focused on mm. is. Sometimes I felt a little bit like they kind of left you alone to work it out this year. And, and I'm not actually sure it was that good a good an idea. Yeah, I love the like beach like music as well for like we're in Melbourne. Da 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 da. Well, I can tell you that everyone that I work with who happens to work in uh, tourism loves that Melbourne is the first <laughs> the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I mean it's it, it it when I watched this before I came to Melbourne, I was like, oh god, I am so amped for this. Mm. Like, there's Melbourne, there's my little home, there's my little place. Um. But yeah, it's oh, also first Ooh. swears, by the way. Yeah, Love some early of- swears. Oh, the best thing about Formula One is the swears. Oh, it's like everybody got the memo. Like, you know you can swear, right? Like, uh, yeah, like we dare you. We dare you to swear. Dare to swear. That could be the uh, the spin-off season, <gasps> like the after show. Yeah, that's Drive to Survive After Dark, Dare to Swear. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're calling uh, this show. If we do hurts. this as a whole series, it's Super Lotus Seeing Presents stuff, Drive to Survive, Dare to Swear. Oh, it hurts me. <sighs> I, I love those little race suits for the kids, when, though. This is last year when things happened, not this year. I have to keep remembering that. Yeah. No, you can see. So it looks like a lot of those drivers aren't even in those positions anymore. Yeah, that's true. That is mm. very true. It was a good event, I thought, this uh, this one that they ran at Fed Square. It actually, it really, it was something that I actually tuned into, as opposed to like, yeah, whatever, it's probably just another driver appearance thing. I remember it, it really did feel... Like it uh, electrified the city in a way that the F1 coming here hadn't really done before. Oh, we got Lewis Hamilton as well this season. He is cool. I love this. I love that none of the Mercedes people know how to say Mercedes AMG <laughs> Petronas. Do you is think it AMG Petronas bit, Mercedes? Did you think, well, here's a question. Do you think that one was staged where he says the name wrong? No. I, I, I think funnily so? enough, okay. I don't think Hamilton would be that good of an actor. <laughs> I don't know. To fake I think that he dances as well as himself he did. that good, but yeah, I don't, I don't know whether it was genuine or not. It just seems like, come on, you've been racing there for seven years or something. You never ever said Mercedes Benz. You always said the team right. So I, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I could be wrong. Oh, yeah. Nico Hockenberg. Oh. oh dear. Oh, everything's fine. Everything's great. I, I really love He's, my my car and my drive smile. and my life. What could he does have wrong? a beaming smile. Do you think Kevin Magnussen is aging the best out of the drivers? I mean, he looked pretty young when he started, though. You think of him on that Melbourne podium in his first race, and he looked almost like a teenager. Do you reckon they mussed up uh, Toto Wolff's hair as well? Like, it looks too neat, muss yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that Toto... I mean, I think Toto is the best story of this season. Like, if we're all talking about Gunter Steiner last year, I want more Toto Wolff in my life. And- yeah. Well, he could um, carry a whole season. He's 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 on that level of Gunter Steiner, but doubly so yeah. because of the success yeah. and all the rest of it. That um, yeah, no, he could easily carry a whole season by himself. 
And especially because, like, he's an entrepreneur and, like, media trained and, like, a good PR person, a good marketer for himself. Oh, yeah. He, you know, he knows how to say things. If anything, I would say that Lewis got the name wrong and then they told Toto to do it as a, jo- a joke. Or Toto was like, I'm going to do it as a joke. He would be the one who Me would too. joke it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess this is, we, we've already kind of had a sizzle reel of all the teams and drivers, but we're meeting them all again, which is hmm, whatever. <laughs> Wankers are rock stars, yeah. I like it's that. I like that someone asked that. Yeah. Good question. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's the whole the whole reason you have a fan event is to get those kind of left field things. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've always said that Formula One's a bit of like, you jump in at the deep end if you're going to get into Formula One. There's just so many in-jokes and so many bits and pieces. But <laughs> yeah, this is always like- really difficult for this show to like summarize all of F1 after. And I think it does just enough history for people. And I love that these little institutions of like, Hey, this is what happened last year. Quick summary of that. And that's why we're talking about this now. I think that it's really well made in that sense. And it's like a good TV show too, where they, they don't just uh, remind you what happened in the past for the sake of it. They remind you of the things that you need to know because it'll enhance your enjoyment of this episode. So They don't just say, hey, remember last year how Haas uh, screwed up their pit stop? They show it to you because, well, you know, spoiler alert, uh, this year might not be that great either. Um, Hmm. But most TV shows will do that. They they, they go, what do you need to know to enjoy this episode, even if that's from last week or if it's from two seasons ago? We need to actually set that up um, to make sure that you're primed for it. Yeah, exactly. I've never seen the guy paint the like Pirelli signs on the grass, so I'm glad I got to see that. <laughs> I've never seen him do it uh, by hand, yeah, for sure. You kind of always also, imagine to have some that, kind of air gun or something. Yeah, that joke from Robert Kubica of like, yeah. hey, right now we're in front of Ferrari, us, <laughs> everybody. That was gold. I really like that. I want more Robert <laughs> Kubica as well. He just seems so well adjusted. He uh, would probably be, you know, better than like a Nico Rosberg or whatever. As someone in the paddock, you could be like, let's just whip around Martin Brummel. What do you think? Simon Lazenby? Yeah, who cares? Uh, you know, Robert, you got something to add? And he'll just, you know, have some very dry wit that he's that he, he can contribute. Yeah, exactly. Ah, oh, so good. Mm. The tension. That's what it looks like now with no one there. <laughs> hey, that's so. That's something we didn't see this year. People entering the gates. Uh, oh well. Yeah, a bit of fantasy, a wish fulfillment. Maybe that's that's what's driving this whole thing, this whole us doing this. Is we, please, <laughs> let us enjoy uh, as if the Australian Grand Prix happened. Not virtually, but like actually happened. Didn't Daniel got gold Daniel- sunglasses to match his yellow branding? <laughs> 100%. Do you think that he started the season, um, his usual jokey, fun kind of self, but turned it down after, number one, Renault went going so well, and number two, he had a few crashes. Do you reckon he just sort of turned it down, turned Daniel down a bit? Yeah, I think so. I think he's carving out a slightly different personality. So he's got his own brand, like this yeah. DR brand that he's working really hard on his own Instagram account. Like he's like he's trying to ingratiate himself into like sport and culture generally. And then yeah. there is his driving persona. It's like Lewis Hamilton. You know, he has his personality outside of Formula One. And then he has his, like, white line fever. Like, no, yeah. I'm a really, like, serious Formula One driver. And I think you see that more and more with especially the younger drivers is that, like, when they're on track. Like, Max Verstappen's a great example. He can be, like, when things aren't going well, he's, like, I'm really, really, really serious and really driven. And, and I always like him when he's like that because he's, like, yeah. he does, he's not really as complainy. He's very, like, I want to go and do a thing. Um, you know, this is a great example. Like the shots of like Dan Ricciardo doing all his like stretching. Yeah, we're in the stuff. workout montage He's really phase serious. of the show. Yeah, um, and I think the drivers are like that. They've put their Formula One hats on. They're like, "Yes, I'm really driven a Formula One driver." And then they take them off. They're like, "Oh yeah, I'm a millionaire who lives in Monaco. I actually have a really <laughs> fun, fun, cool life." Here we go. Here's da- the Daniel yeah. arriving at Renault for the first time. Going to walk around and ingratiate himself with people. Act as if he's just you know he might be an intern. He might be the guy, the new cleaner. <laughs> Uh, yeah, with his, hi. like, $2,000 backpack. Call me Dan. Is that a $2,000 backpack, you reckon? I think that- Isn't that a Louis Vuitton backpack that says LA? There's no way in hell he paid for that. There's no way. Mm, spend your money on something. I guess so. I meant to say before when old mate uh, Bill Waxon popped up, no Chris Medlin this year, which means in terms of the talking heads, in terms of the sort of F1 authority, voices of authority, um, it seems to me like some episodes don't have any- but the ones that mm. do only have uh, Will Buxton, which I felt maybe was a little bit lacking. I liked the variety of 
him being the very plain spoken guy and another little bit more sophisticated, little bit more technical voice. I liked having the mix of two voices in the show, having one, just not sure that it works as well, but it might be because he's not my favorite person. Yeah, that could be. Could I be. Think it's because <laughs> they had more drivers and more teams and more people yeah, yeah, to maybe, fit in the show. Maybe, maybe they were just like, we can't have like double the talking heads. Yeah, people are going to I know you confused. love talking They heads, might think but... that you're a driver and you're not. Yeah, exactly. What do you think of the Renault uh, offices and factory? Because I thought the offices looked really fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I don't know what all of the offices and factories look like. I mean, you think of the, like, the McLaren one, or you think of that foyer with all the gorgeous cars that have all won championships kind of lined up. But I'm sure behind mm. that, you walk through a door and it looks like this. So I'm not sure. Oh. Man of the people, Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, if I had tattoos and I saw someone else with the same tattoo, yeah, I'd probably do more than a hug. They definitely gave Daniel a Renault branded jumper as well on arrival for this filming because he was wearing like a black t-shirt and a, and a coat. Oh, and now he's he? got yeah, this Renault right. like just hoodie. This Not might even be a different hoodie, day. just a jumper. So it's sort of presented yeah. as the same day, but it might be another day. If you... I love that feeling. If you're at Renault and Daniel Ricciardo joined the team, you'd just be like, oh, yes. God oh, damn, yeah. that's awesome. I mean, you wouldn't believe your luck. No. And now Esteban Ocon as well. Like, French driver. He's True. massively talented. You know, like, uh, it, it must just be amazing for the team at Renault and really inspire them and, and drive them to survive. <laughs> Man, there's the outro for the show. There's, uh, like, roll credits. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right. We're getting serious now. Helmets on. Cars are rolling. It said two days to move a Grand Prix. I guess this is practice day. It's one of those and funny things up. where it's like F1 starts now, and it's like, but the race isn't for three more days. But, uh, yeah, I guess they just mean stuff is happening on the track. Good insight there that the car doesn't drive itself. Very good. This is what doesn't you tune into time. shows like this for. Do you feel like, yeah, do you find that, that like this show plays a little basic? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I just said before that like sometimes I felt like it needed to go more basic, but then I feel like there's other times where it needs to ramp it up more and not just to satisfy uh, the sort of seasoned F1 fans, but actually to, you know, take people on that journey and show them the range. Not just, this mm. isn't just, this isn't kids play all the time. We have fun, but then there's a really serious time and serious shit goes down and it's hard to get right. And I think that needs to be uh, conveyed a little better. Yeah. I think that the, the season develops that way. You know, I think as in the season yeah, of the perhaps. show, I think yeah. that it gets, like it builds on its, you build on your learning. Could do. Definitely it shows highs and lows, but I'm just not sure that it reflects as much the the overly technical, like these guys are all uber geniuses. Um, you know, people were joking this year, like, oh, I can't wait to watch, uh, can't wait to watch Drive to Survive season three and find out what was happening behind closed doors with them all shutting down and coronavirus and all the rest of it. But it's like, well, these guys are not working now, but they're turning around and within, you know, a few hours or overnight, they'll turn around and go, ah, those inhalers that you wanted, we've made them 10 times better, making them for half <laughs> yeah. the cost. And, uh, you know, we'll have them tomorrow. Yeah. Just exactly. like we, we just 3D fixed- printed all of them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they've been tested in wind tunnels. They're all so aerodynamic, those new oh, yeah. ventilators. <laughs> if you face into the wind, the, the, like the, yeah, the, the inhaler the just more like, it'll do all the work. You won't even need to breathe. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah. And it happens to come in our brain colors. <laughs> mm. He's got a nice voice, Bonotti. Sense already Bonotti. a little bit, even from this intro, that like Ferrari have got a job to do here and they, they, they're, they're hungry, but they're also acknowledging that they're not- at the top of the sport, which is, I guess, someone watching this for the first time and not really knowing, like, they probably know Ferrari. They probably know they're meant to be good, but don't really know that Ferrari have been disappointing for the last 12 years or so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. Did you see there that um, one of the brakes on the Red Bull was blurred? No. I hadn't seen that on any of this stuff, but yeah, the, the brakes were blurred. Obviously, it's Melbourne. Maybe they'd said to them, like, you can't, you can use those shots, but you can't. You're going to have to blur the bits of the car that are uncovered. I wonder if it's because that 
whatever team it was, has changed brake supplier. And now they're like, oh, we have a contract now with someone else. You can't advertise mm. the old supplier. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Here he is. He's back. Look how wide his eyes are. He's going to explain everything to us. Tell me, Will. Tell me what to think. And in a, re- and in a really comforting manner. Yeah. In a, in a way that seems oh. thoughtful, but is actually just very serious. Uh, simple. <laughs> oh, I... Those ski mask things, I feel like I would get claustrophobic just putting that on. Like, that would be worse <laughs> than the helmet for me, is having that thing sticking against your skin with no relief. I, I yeah. wouldn't like it. I feel like Christian Horner is all bark and no bite. Like, he's always um. like, this is very serious. <laughs> and don't crash the car, ha, ha, ha. And look, if you see Daniel in the mirrors, give him no quarter. And it's <laughs> like, all right, Christian. All right, mate. Sure, sure. <laughs> I feel like, I'm not sure if it's right now or a bit later, but he always cracks out that line of, you know, this is where you drop your pants and you see what everyone's got, you know? And it's like, uh, really? Because yeah. he said, like, in the time I've been watching Formula One, I've heard him say it probably 7,000 times. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's the he's the vice principal. Like, as in, like, I know he's the team principal, but he acts like a, <laughs> like a, a high school vice principal. You know, like, oh, I'll get you, you meddling kids, or watch out because there's serious consequences. It's like, mate, you know that Max Verstappen is the whole brand, right? Like, you know that <laughs> no one knows who you are and everyone knows who Max is. Yeah, that's very true. Think like pads, think pads everywhere. Looks. Who knew? <laughs> Um, so why are we jumping to a week earlier? This is, this was another criticism I heard about this series is it jumps around in time in a confusing sense. I guess they mean Mm. more throughout the season, but it's like, yeah, why the hell do we need to know that? Like what? Well, now this is just the Red Bull episode. That's what I mean. Like I was saying it before, like, I feel like this season was like they picked one team almost for each episode. Yeah, they very much did. Or one on two teams and then used the whole season for information there. Whereas the first season, season one of Drive to Survive, they kind of went through somewhat chronologically. Hmm. Like kept the races chronological. I don't know if we're going to get F1 racing this year. We may end up doing this whole, the 10 episodes (laughs) commentaries. I don't know. But- um, I was really excited coming into the season, knowing we've got access to Mercedes, we've got access to Ferrari. I was like, oh, well, the, the, the gloves are off now. We have access to those, not just those teams and personalities, but the storylines, and that the yeah. battle of the championship would be a bigger deal of, as part of the season. And it just kind of wasn't. And of course, there's no. the there's the profile episodes, the one about Ferrari and the one about Mercedes. The Mercedes one was particularly good, but they got very lucky having access to them for that weekend of the German Grand Prix. But as a whole, thinking back on the season, I just feel like the championship battle was given virtually no importance, which it was such a strength of the first season, but it's such a weakness of this season. Yeah, no, I agree. Ah, oh, thanks. I was hoping that I'd handball to you for a little minute, but no. Okay. Uh, at least well, you sometimes agree. Sometimes I'm just going to watch the show and know uh, what's happening. True. So we'll watch, him, watch Max do donuts. That's always fun. Mm, donuts. I haven't had a donut in days. I had hot oh, cross buns donuts. this morning, though. Came in my <laughs> online shopping delivery. Um, oh, very the good. first one I've managed to get for like weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, so yeah, I wonder if Max Verstappen likes a hot cross bun. He probably likes like the toffee chocolate ones, not the the fruit ones. Do you think? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, he drives he a seems like ball. a savory guy. Sugar to me. and energy. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I think he likes pizza. I think he likes, uh, you know. I was going to say, like, pull aparts, but they probably don't have Baker's Delight in, in the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have they have Danishes, I think, right? Although they're not- I know that the Danish is not the same as the Netherlands. They're the Dutch, but, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's you over the border, so, you know. Yeah. Like, he probably likes, uh, you know, a bit of Vegemite on toast, that kind of thing. Oh, man, imagine- Oh, points. This is how the points work, Rod. Did you know that? Very good. Very good. He's earning his money. <sighs> I'm surprised there's no on-screen graphics for that, just to show us, just in case you missed graph it. graph to explain to me that fifth is not as good as first. God, his eyes are really open, aren't they? But he's, he just he has this lights. intensity, but there's what he's saying isn't mm. intense. <laughs> Do you think that Roman Grosjean picked his like personal trainer slash manager guy because he looks like him? Like, he looks really similar. When they both wear glasses, be- I'm like, oh, you're the same guy. Same build, same face shape. Could be part of that, I guess. I mean, if you were going to- It's like, you know- um, Rich energy. If you go to a hairdresser and the hairdresser's got an amazing haircut, you're probably like, I'm in good hands. This guy knows what a good haircut is. If you're getting a personal trainer and he was overweight, you'd be like, you just don't- I, I don't trust 
you. I don't want to turn my body into yours unless you're <laughs> better, in better shape than me, you know. Oh, here we again, go again, we're jumping around. Flashback. Like, this could have just earlier. been... It's just America. So, it's so heavy having a title one month earlier. We don't need it. Oh. You can tell because his hair is much, much fluffier. It's very long. He's got a real afro kind of thing going. Oh, see, the thing is, when Gunter Steiner ribs his team, you can tell that they are barbs but also jokes when christian horner does it there's nothing funny about his jokes they just come off as being like oh you know you really believe that whereas gunter's yeah. like i'm having a bit of a laugh with you it would be great if you could do better roman like when he's really pissed off he doesn't joke about it he's yeah. like i will fire you, do you think <laughs> i will the, jettison you out of this team do you think the renault offices look uh as boring now that we're seeing the haas uh, manufacturing plan hmm the haas manufacturing plant looks more like a garage which i kind of like this really just looks like a warehouse. Yeah, but that kind At of- At least the Renault offices look more like a lab or something. Hmm. So you would want more like, a, more like, you know, a watch factory, like everything hermetically sealed, like everything, like white polished floor, all that kind of stuff, as opposed to like, this is a, a warehouse. Yeah, I think preferably no one would be allowed in without a white coat and a clipboard, basically. Mm, sponsored, yeah. sponsored white coat and clipboard. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, that makes the sponsors pop, doesn't it? There's Australia's entire Air Force flying over. <laughs> That's all of it. We did get the roulettes this year, which was fun. Uh, the event was, was cancelled, but Thursday happened and the roulettes flew, to, flew over the track oh, this year. Got to nice. see that from my window too. That was nice. Now we're on the grid. We're only minutes away. And let me just I'll get a bit of, get a bit more bucks in here. Uh, they take all the cars to the grid and then they get ready to race. And there's a bit of time between them getting to the grid and them actually starting the race. Yeah. And now all of these people, Rod, in the branded gear, they're not all driving, are they? Some of those are like pit crew workers. Spot on, um, Zach. Most of them are not staff. driving. Most of them. Most of them. A small percentage of, of them. them will drive. There's the no ones way with the helmets in the cars. <laughs> Finally, we're off, Rod. Look at them all. The best oh, moment no, of any no, race no, to the start. Oh, oh no. no. I knew it was coming. It makes me yeah. sick. Because it was his fault. What's he doing driving on the grass, Rod? Get off the grass. Well, oh. I mean, he made too good a start. That was the problem. He cared too much. Yeah. He gets jitters at home. He's not great in Melbourne. I mean, I he was okay one year. Mm, but yeah. Yeah. He's never great at home. That's true. He's not a great starter, really. He webbers his starts. He's not. He's, you know what? You know what else he's not good at? He's just in, like everything. Like he's actually not not very good. I'm I'm turning. This has turned me. I don't like Daniel Ricciardo anymore. Oh really? You, yeah, so drama. You heard it here first. You? I'm off. I'm off the bandwagon. Get get Nico Hockenberg back in that Renault seat. Yeah, more deserving. He won the Mans, you know. Oh, also, guess what's back? The fake commentary uh, yeah. that they made for the show, which is terrific. Well, <laughs> I didn't notice it as much last season, but then when it was pointed out, man, it really sticks out this season a lot more. Sorry, I did that to you. <laughs> Look at him go. He's really like, he's down, but he's not out. I kind of admire that. I kind of, you know what I mean? They're going to He's a fighter. Car, he's a good guy, Dan. I'm back on board. Do you think Daniel's learning French? Uh, he must be learning some. We, oui. uh, mm. Yeah. We oui. oui. gave it a go. I do not so good. Your heart goes out to him. You love to see it. <sighs> there he is, though. The real commentators. It's nice to hear. Uh, yeah, but there must be enough real commenta- commentary that they can get most of what they need, right? There must be. Yeah, there is. It's just when they want to, like, just- when there was obviously no commentary on this battle yeah, like, or, like, like this. <laughs> this bit of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that could a have been us in the grandstand to- this year that they were cutting to. Just imagine. Yeah. Uh, how good is that car, though? Good question. Yeah. So good. <laughs> just so good. Now, do you, I, Haas definitely overuse the word dude. Haas are all like, dude, dude, dude. This is dude. That is dude. We're all dudes. Yeah, that's true. Because they're so American. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Stupid. I don't know. I don't know if I want to tell this story, but it's, it's my dude story. Um, <laughs> it's dumb, though, so maybe I won't. 
Maybe another time. <laughs> another time. Why is he just sitting there, Rod? Oh, Why left. isn't he going? Front Why left. isn't he going? Fuck, 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 fuck. You're a oh, fuck. No. Hey, you know what you look like? Wankers. That's what you look like. Wankers. You look like wankers, not like rock stars. Oh, that wankers. look from Gunther is like, what the fuck is happening? And it's like we know that look and we're expecting it. Yeah. Okay, dude. Dude. Hey, dude. <laughs> okay, dude. Uh, hey, dude. Dude, I think we Every fucked school, up, dude. dude. <laughs> How's your radio, dude? Radio check, dude. Check, check. Copy, copy, dude. Dude, one, two. Dude, one, two. <laughs> dude, you got me, dude. Dude, dude. 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 Stop the car, dude. When they're really serious, though, they say your name. They don't say, stop the car, dude. We've got to retire, dude. They go. <laughs> That's true. That's when you know you're in trouble is when they don't call you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Roman, we need to It's talk. just like Holy when your shit. parents call you by your full name. Exactly. Exactly. Zachary, you can't play the Witcher all day. <laughs> Good beard on that guy, though. Mm, there's great He's beards in that right in the now. world. Good hat. Everybody looks really like like they're having a nice time in the crowd. Really, yes. yeah. Not like, Australia I was say knows really strange because that's not anything. But like, it looks yeah. sunny, and everyone's got their hats on, and sunnies on, and like shorts and t-shirts. Ah, oh, the dream. We do it right. We do it right. Look how fast it looks. So good. <laughs> I don't Bit know. The Ferrari guy. team always just looks like a bunch of like Italian dads like getting their shit together. <laughs> they always look like they just scoffed a cinnamon roll, and it's like, oh, what do you mean I'm meant to get some tires? Are you serious? My espresso's getting cold. Damn. Yeah, my espresso's getting cold. Very good. <laughs> He's coming in again. Oh, I thought we fixed it last time. Jeez. Yes, I mean, the funny on, thing about dude. we're definitely catching them is they have hard data to show that. You, we don't need your opinion, Max, like telling us how close you think you are. We have data. We have GPS data that tells us how yeah, close you are. I'm, I'm the one that's telling you that you're catching him. That's how that works. Uh Magnuson, Maximum. They really, I guess maybe because Haas is the US team, but they really kind of set him up as a bit of a hero, don't they? Hmm. Go, go, go. Oh, a bit wide, but a bit rude, but he gets away with it. Yes. But Grosjean, off home. No can do. Mm-hmm. Do you think this race commentary guy who they brought in, do you think he does them each week like he watches the race live and does commentary or do you think he w- gets recordings at like the end of the year and then does them all that way and they script I mean, I him. wonder about that they, they must go to him and say here's the sort of thing we need right like we've got a gap we we just need you to kind of cover the gap he might get the footage or just some footage yeah here's the clip the, the battle i don't know it would be interesting yeah. to learn that kind of stuff yeah, I mean, you get it, that it, on, um, what do we call it? What was the After Dark, dark Drive to Survive show? I don't, I don't remember. I've already forgotten. Dork, dork to Talk? Dork Talk? I don't know. No. Uh. Only second. Good on you, Valtteri. So who admit me concern? Fuck you. <laughs> Yes, that's what we're all thinking on that day. Wow, Kevin Magnuson, yeah, so what great. a race. I feel so glad for Magnuson to come sixth. <laughs> yes. You know, here sixth is better than tenth. Yeah. Yes, I made it to the end and didn't crash into my teammate. What a race. Because <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't there to crash into. God, it looks squishy down the pit lane, right? Lining all the cars up. God, I guess it must be. hell... Christian Horner, how in love are you with Max Verstappen? He would adopt him if he could. He just loves Max Verstappen so much. And he doesn't know that, just like his other son, Sebastian Vettel, he will be betrayed by him. Yeah. And Max will leave to go to Mercedes. Yeah. And yeah. and Christian be will be more embittered and more twisted. Oh, I'm really happy for look, all of the Honda I know, guys. I mean, I know though, he right? is a dad, but he, he, look, he, he never looks more like a dad than when Max has done well and he's just beaming with pride. Yeah. Oh, Honda. I'm so happy for Honda. Those guys work so hard. Those people work so hard. Ugh. Just the doubters. All those people out there that doubted them. Like, I was, I I was know, the doubter. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <Us laughs> me. I was the doubter. Me. I'm the doubter right here. Uh, you know, good on them. It, it wasn't really Toro good Rosso for most of the time. <laughs> McLaren <laughs> the whole time. When I'm a millionaire, I'm going to store my headphones in one of those uh, storage things. Just like that. 
Are you going to have the same ones over and over again, though? Yeah, I'm going to get the Huss one. <laughs> I'm going to actually get that exact one, and I'll get good like to a, design it. A wine fridge, but for headphones. Oh, Daniel, just go home, mate. Just go home. Don't talk to anyone. Your launch was awesome. So good. You, you took a great out of the ground. I mean, that just happens to the best of them. Oh, oh. oh man. Just don't. I don't need to see the replay. Stop showing me. But flip side, classic Daniel. So Australian. You go get him, mate. My Dan. Hmm. Well, I, do you skip? Do time. you? Yeah. Do you skip the what happened next time? Because I obviously we know what happens because we watched the season, but I don't like the reveal. I wish that there was a skip outro, like there's a skip intro on Netflix. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I guess so. It, it's also a little bit like um, the the very the, the the likelihood is I'm going to watch that episode right now. It's not like a TV show where it's like. Don't forget us next week. Same time, same channel. Come back next week. Here's what we're going to show you. Here's, here's a little taste. It's like, I'm no. going to watch it right now. Yeah. Don't tell me. Or like shorten this way down. Yeah. It is way know. too long. Yeah. Maybe for the first one, it's okay though. Because some people I could imagine would watch the first episode to be like, I've never heard of this thing. What is it about even? Don't know anything about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're at the credits, Zach. That means our job here is not job as if this is a job. Jeez. Not work. This is fun. Um, well, that's the end of our commentary. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, please let us know what you think, actually. If you want us to do more of this sort of thing in general, uh, let us know. Last year, we did for the Patreon people, the lovely Patreon people, a, a an overall kind of recap and discussion of the whole season. But we just thought, yeah, do something different this year. See how it goes. It went pretty well. Yeah, it's the first time I've done that. Probably could pay attention a little bit more to the show because this is our general chat. I haven't spoken to you in a couple of weeks, Rod, so, you know, I just wanted to, just wanted to get into it like normal. But I thought it was fun. I would, yeah. maybe I should be watching more TV shows with people more often. Uh, well, yeah, now the technology exists. Now you can do it. Um, I actually kind of find that, I mean, maybe it's just my life circumstance right now, but I just find that really unappealing. Like, I just want to watch it when I want to watch it. And if I want to watch five in a row, that's my business. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's our commentary done for the first episode of Season 2, Drive to Survive. Hope you liked it. Um, Zach, are we going to do anything else before we kick this little baby home this week? I reckon we could do Super Quiz. Oh, I'm so on board for that. Have you got it pulled up and ready to go? I kind of just threw yeah. it under the bus a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Let's ready get to into the theme. And on the other side of this, you can hit me with your best shot. We will accept a couple of questions. Should one only win one? Would one want to have won that one in round one? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Never gets old. Never gets old. All right, Zach. Never gets old. Um, never gets old. All right, I'm going straight into it. Okay, there's not much racing going on right now, Rod, but instead of correct. playing hooky with the quiz, I thought we'd play rookie with the quiz. <laughs> this is the rookie quiz. Okay. I sometimes feel like my intros to the quizzes are better than the quizzes themselves. Um, no. Don't tell me that, listeners, if that's the case. Um, <laughs> don't so, at me, I know it. Um, Rod, just a quick recap. Um, what a rookie yep. driver is. Uh, drivers are generally considered rookies um, if they're totally new to the grid. Um, you could say that really a rookie is their first full season, sure. um, yeah, you know, like sure. their named driver in that driver seat um, because sometimes, you know, test drivers step in when drivers are sick or injured or other reasons. Um, but as far as like the hardest idea of what a rookie driver is uh, in Formula One for 2020, who's the only rookie that we have? Uh, Nick Latifi. It's Nick Latifi. Can you remember the last time? This isn't an actual question, but like only one rookie. That seems so weird. I feel like there was one season where there was like six, but then since yeah. then it's been slim pickings. And some drivers yeah. like have gone and come back, but they're not technically rookies. So yeah, there's a bit of change about, but it's, it's, uh, if you're looking for fresh face youngsters, you have to, you look no further than, uh, the, the Williams driver. Yeah, yeah, and that's the only one. So, on that note, with uh, Nicholas Latifi joining the Formula One grid, and this is less of a rookie question and more about uh, vexillology, um, <laughs> which is the only country represented on the grid that doesn't have red in their flag? Uh, it's, uh, is it wherever Nicholas Latifi is from? No. Okay. But do you know where Nicholas Latifi is from? No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I haven't met the guy. I've never even seen him turn a wheel. 
Um, okay. Let's think about it. Oh, it. Wait, it's Bottas, so it's Finland. Yes, yes, it is. I mean, it's, not it's Bottas, Bottas Michael also. But yeah, Finland. Yes. No, no red yes. there. Yeah, no red in Finland flag. Obviously, oh, blue and white. Running, like, Everybody oh. else has red. Um, Nicholas, the TV, is uh, Canadian. So his ah, flag has, he has red in it. I was just looking down the driver list and I was like, wait a second. All these flags have got a bit of red. Different shades of red. And I checked all of the official coding, color codings of all the flags. Uh, I thought like they could be maybe a burgundy. You consulted like Pantone a- on this one. Yes, 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 yes. I called up Mr. Pantoni and said, I love your cakes and also your colours. Good colours, um, right? White. They'd be good for an F1 podcast, I reckon, brand colours. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, years that had a lot of rookies, uh, 2015, I think there was maybe six in 2015, Ooh, yeah, wow. uh, at least five. Who are the only two that are still on the grid today? Um, well, is, is that, uh, let me think. Is it mm-hmm. the colour signs Max Verstappen year? Is that the year? That's the year. Got it in one. Yeah, I got it in two in one. Two for one, yeah. baby. Boom, we'll boom, only boom. accept Carlos Sainz Jr. Though. Oh, get fucked. Uh, so half points. <laughs> get fucked. Sorry. Get yeah, absolutely fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the next uh, question. Uh, by the way, there is one, two, three, four, five questions. This Thank week. you. Um, um, which driver still on the grid today reached the podium on his debut race but has never reached it again? Oh, is it Kevin Magnuson? Oh, yeah, it's Ken Madison. You alluded oh. to it earlier. We should and watch so did, an episode so the of the TV theme. about whatever the thing is to jog my memory uh, all the time. We should do that every <laughs> week. I think, Kevin, that that question maybe comes up, or the answer, Kevin Magnuson, to that oeuvre of question. It's maybe come up 30 times in our quizzes. It's such no, a great right. time. <laughs> maybe it has. <laughs> okay. Uh, the last question of the playing rookie quiz. Um, which driver won Le Mans in 2011? And then in 2014, made his F1 debut at Spa, where he only finished one lap, and that was the only F1 race he would ever be in. Uh, so, hang on. So, he was in Spa 2014, is that what you said? Yep. So, he, he won Le Mans in 2011. So, he's yeah. an accomplished driver. He's not a nobody. But then made an F1 debut in 2014, so three years later, um, at Spa, which should be interesting because that's usually in the middle of the year um yep. he raced one lap and then had to retire the car and never raced again in formula one it's wait i want to say it's like andre lotterer but that doesn't sound right it is andre lotterer oh wow <laughs> because i yeah. thought lotterer did another race or more races no he was invited to do the next race um but they wouldn't promise him the seat and ah. but mainly he wasn't going to do uh free practice one Right. And he was like, no, I was promised that the whole weekend. I want all the laps. And they're like, you don't want to give up just one free practice but you, but you and and race the He's whole rest of the weekend. He was like, no, thank you. No can do. No, thank you. So, I'm yeah. all in. I'm all in, baby. Um, wow, Andre Lotta. Like, the thing is, the, thing, the reason I thought it might not be him is because I was like, 2014, was I switched on enough to remember a back market team <laughs> and a guy who subbed in for one race? Am I switched on enough in 2014 to remember that? Turns out I was. Turns out, turns out you knew all of the answers to this quiz. You got 100%. Yeah. Oh, the one for the history books, because that's probably never happened before. Yeah, you're not a rookie as far as quizzes go, are you? No, you could, you could in fact say I'm something of a master. Well, thank you, Zach. Um, very much appreciated. I like that we're keeping the tradition of the quiz going, even though there's no races to talk about. Um, very little by way of news to talk about, but... We may or may not come back sometime soon with a little bit more content as we as, as we feel like it. Zach, I hear you're going to have a little bit of time on your hands, so you might be itching, mm, itching for yeah, a little bit of Skype action. Exactly. Look, at this point, I think the latest is that Canada has been delayed now. So mm-hmm. I think at this point, we're looking at end of June is when Formula One is hoping to get back. Uh, um, hoping, so we'll yeah. we'll see. Hoping. I think that's the French Grand Prix. Uh, uh, so which, everybody... Which, uh, Chris, is that... Everyone get your hopes up because, uh, yeah, definitely <laughs> in two weeks when you hear racing is off until uh, at least August, um, at least you'll have had that uh, bit of something to look forward to. No, seriously, I, I you know, as soon as, as soon as there's word official and it looks hopeful, F1's going to be racing again, we will be back to tell you about it. Don't worry. But I With think the assumption vengeance. is really, but let's just like assume it's not happening until we hear otherwise for sure, because I'm kind of sick of getting my hopes dashed right now. Yeah, no, for lots of things. I had Wimbledon tickets this year. Oh, mm. oh I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, well, I could yeah. be far worse off. I'm doing very well, 
considering the situation. I hope everybody else out there is too. Um, washing your hands, happy birthday twice, or you could hum the Formula One team to your, uh, theme to yourself once. <laughs> I think that's long enough. Um, and, you know, keep your social distancing. You should all know how, how wide two meters is or, or, you know, six foot six. That's about the width of a Formula One car, right? About two yeah, meters. Yeah, a bit less than one Michael Jordan. So imagine yes. lying on the ground, one Michael Jordan, a little bit less. That's, that's how far away you should be yeah. from everyone else. And just because you're jogging around doesn't mean that you're immune yeah. to that. Keep that your two meters. That applies to you, headphones. That applies to yeah. you, walking the dog. Yeah, exactly. That applies yeah. to you, dog. Dude. Yeah, come on, dog. All right, mate. Um, well, yeah, look, we don't know when we'll be back. We don't want to say, like, oh, we'll be back next week. We're going to keep coming at you every month. I, I just don't know. Like, we'll be back uh, soon. Uh, and, you know, let us know what you thought of this. I thought it was really fun. Uh, definitely, like I say, something I've always wanted to do. Now we've done one. So Yeah, and if you don't like it, that. listeners, Rod and I will probably do more for ourselves anyway. <laughs> Yeah, tell us whether you liked it or not, because whether we do it or not will be an indication of what we think about you as a person, as an individual. So keep that in mind. Until next time, though, whenever that will be, my name has been Rodney. My name has been Zach. And we'll see you, Dano, whenever. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.